Welcome back to Jason's Indoor Guide, everybody. So I've been getting a lot of questions about the uh, garden design and the affordable build. Uh, as you can see, I've utilized some cardboard in the design of this particular garden. And this hole simply slides sideways a couple times, and that uh, I have a small opening revealing a garage. Just a normal garage. You can see the other side of my ventilation there. And this time of year, it's about 35 degrees out here. This is why we normally keep this isolated from the rest of the, the garden space. Now, you can see these little wood strips. They're only uh, one by three furring strips. I've got them screwed into the studs here and there giving us a nice anchor to tie securely the ropes that support our life very important same thing with the board and the ceiling got a furring strip going right into those studs and for a backup some vertical supports there I know that doesn't <laughs> Doesn't look the uh, the greatest there, but believe it or not, that's jammed in there pretty good, and it's got a screw there, making sure that doesn't slip. And uh, these boards here, four by eight sheets of insulation board. They're about an inch and a half thick. They cost twenty dollars a piece. And after we put these eight foot sticks of furring strip in. They fit very securely. Uh, we put a couple pieces of cardboard under the bottom to wedge them in there through compression so nothing's permanent there. And it provides just enough, uh, just enough of a stiff frame to put these boards up against. Two $20 boards to make this eight foot wall. And we put it right into the corner of the garage. It's a four foot wall of the garage there and eight foot section of the wall here. And a little four foot section at the end of the garden. It's a four by eight operating garden, and a little four foot section here at the end for the ballasts, uh, timer, and miscellaneous odds and ends, some expanded clay pellets, rubber dirt plugs, what have you. And man, we already had the ventilation fan, some four inch ducting. Uh, we actually picked up a used reflector at a local grow store for $25. Um, had a leftover ballast from a previous grow. Really nice ballast as a matter of fact. We've got a cheap oscillating fan going back and forth circulating the air. So all together hmm $13 storage totes, uh, $29 water pump, uh, these square PVC fence posts are about seven feet long, as a matter of fact. They're not quite eight feet long. And they were about $20 a piece. $20, $40, $60, $80 dollars wrapped up just in the fence posts. $0.50 cents a piece for each of the 24 netted pots. About $9 worth of expanded clay pellets to fill the pots. Now I do have a uh, 7 or $8 thermometer floating around in the bottom of that nutrient reservoir. Maybe another $20 for the indoor outdoor thermometer. Maybe another $20 for the timer. Absolutely critical in my opinion. So as you can see this is a pretty low cost setup. Um, if you did not have a light and a ballast the uh, complete grow system, systems with lights, ballasts, and bulbs, and timers, uh, $160 from Amazon. So package deal, uh, they used to be like four or $500, even just six, seven years ago. So the prices come down a whole lot. Uh, makes it a lot more affordable to set up a home garden nowadays, uh, especially if you're going to build a homemade system. Remember, all good hydroponic systems need to do three things. They need to provide at the root level oxygen, nutrients, and water. And there's a variety of ways of doing that. And this particular system is a deep water culture. 
The water is being pumped into these tubes here. And the outer tube there, and the outer tube there. And it's flowing all the way down. Exchanging over into the two interior tubes and flowing all the way back on these two interior tubes. Where it's flowing back into the reservoir. The nutrient solution. Oh, about three inches deep. Take a peek right here. Yeah, about two and a half inches deep, but just deep enough to cover the bottom half inch of that pot when I put it back in there. The uh, nutrient reservoir does have an air pump. Forgot to mention that. That was $20 and a couple of air stones. It's another $6. Keeps that water highly oxygenated. Nutrient absorption only occurs in the presence of oxygen. You have to keep that nutrient solution highly oxygenated. Just in case you're wondering, we got a couple different strains in here. We've got a mango choco. We've got ooh, about 20 purple gods. We got a couple of these nice looking Afghan cows. They're all eight week varieties, which means I expect them to go nine weeks. <laughs> But uh, some people complain they have problems with root, root rot uh, once, once putting in the uh, plants into this system, the standing water. Some plants are temperamental. They don't like standing water. One thing I would suggest is when you're taking your clones, instead of just putting them in some root gel and some rapid rooter plug, you could cut them and put them in a container of standing water. After about five or six days they will start putting some roots out and because those roots are developed in a watery environment they will be already adapted to grow quite successfully in a deep water culture. It'll help improve some people's success rate with this system here. Uh, if you have too many problems with roots in a deep water culture system, one easy solution would be to convert these into flood and drain systems. And you could fill these tubes with the expanded clay pellets pretty cheaply. And you could just flood them for a couple of minutes. Actually, clay pellets will require about 15 or 20 minutes of flooding to absorb the appropriate amount of moisture and then drain them. And uh, that'll eliminate the issue of standing water, and the plants will be very happy with that. Another option would be to convert them to an aeroponic system. I normally don't prefer aeroponic systems. I have a lot of problems with clogging drip emitters and clogging drip heads, and so I normally shy away from those systems. However, and as you've seen in some of my other videos, you could simply put a low pressure pump on a piece of tubing and drill some 16th inch holes in the tubing. And it makes um, a low tech aeroponic system that works pretty darn good. And the particulates don't seem to affect it. The holes are large enough. Uh, the low pressure pumps, the Rio pumps that I like to use, um, the particulate doesn't bother it at all. And. I'll have to include a link to that so you can check that out. Um, it's a good strategy. Uh, either way, converting this into an aeroponic system by running possibly a half inch line down the center and popping in uh, easy cloner spray nozzle, replacement spray nozzles. We found them at a local hydroponic gardening store for 10 cents a piece. Uh, there's six holes on this tube. If you ran a half inch line of PVC and six spray nozzles on it. That would only be 60 cents in spray nozzles for that tube. A stick of PVC will cost a lot more than that. You have to probably put a manifold on it, maybe a two and a half inch line to feed the half inch line, half inch line, half inch line, and half inch line on that. You might even need to buy a 30 PSI pump to make sure you got enough pressure to run all 24 of those spray heads. But it wouldn't be that difficult. 
and so there you go for maybe a hundred dollars put together the physical structure of the garden nothing's permanent it has uh, completely separated the airspace of this garden from the rest of the airspace of the garage it's providing a very consistent temperature at the moment without using any ventilation whatsoever and that'll definitely change come May when the outdoor temperature starts to warm up but that, that's it for the moment good luck everybody and happy gardening